Hi everyone, in this quick tip, we're going to revisit one of the standard scripts that ships with After Effects that very few people actually make use of. I have actually seen professionals reaching out looking for scripts of some kind or trying to write their own in order to achieve this effect. And it comes to a it's come it, it comes as a very big surprise to them when they find out that they that this actually exists within After Effects. And the script is create nulls from paths. So let's take a look at how this works. First, I'm going to create a new composition and I am going to add a shape into this composition. Now this shape is going to be a polystar. So I'm going to go ahead and select from the flyout menu polystar. And what I want to do at this point is I want to also add a uh, stroke so I can see the actual shape. And I want to turn that polystar from a star into a Bezier path. So once I click on that, this ceases to be a star, but it leaves all of the points that I created from that, that actually create the shape that I'm looking at. I want to remove the ones from the inner radius. So I'm going to switch my tool to the pen tool and I am going to click to remove all of these guys inside and on the inside radius so that I end up with only six points on my shape. Uh, sorry, five points. One, two, three, four, five. And what I want to do is I want to use this path to create um, null objects that control each point within the path. So how do I achieve that? Well, with the path selected, for this you need to select the actual path. Go to your drop-down window menu, and all the way at the bottom you'll see something that says Create Nulls from Paths. Once you click on that script, this window opens up and it gives you three options. Options 1 and 2 are pretty much opposite of each other. So points follow nulls means you will create nulls that will be parented to each point on your shape and the null will control the point. The, op the opposite would be nulls follow points, which means you will have nulls that are children of each point and each point controls the null. And the third one is trace paths, which I will explain in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and click on the first one. Points follow nulls. Remember, you need to have the path selected, and then you click on points follow nulls. When you do that, what the program has done is it has created as many nulls as you have points within your path. And so it doesn't have to be five points. It could be any number of points. And the program will create, will look at each point within that path and at a null object, parent that point to that null object, and so the null object controls that point. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and select this null object here, and if I move that null object on the comp, you'll notice that I am deforming the shape that I had created before, because that point control is controlled by the parent null object. And each one of those null objects is attached, like I said, as a parent to each point, which means that I can go ahead and move them independently giving you a lot of flexibility. So that's one thing. Now, let's take a look. You can reuse these null objects because as you see, they are simply null objects. They exist within your environment as null objects. So if I go ahead and create yet a new shape, and this time I'm going to, let me place it all the way at the top. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create into this shape layer, I am going to create yet another star. And this time, instead of five point, I'm going to do a three point star. So let me uncollapse this and reduce that to three points. I am going to turn it into a path. By the way, this needs to be turned into a path in order for this to take effect. So I'm going to select convert to busy a path. And then I'm going to remove the, these three little anchor points right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select my pen tool. And I'm going to remove the inner portion of that triangle. So now I have a true triangle path. Now with that done, let me go ahead and add a stroke so I can see it and select the path and follow the same process. I will open up the window for the create nulls from paths and I'm going to add points follow nulls. Now you'll notice that when I do that, I get a new set three null objects that are attached to the points within that triangle. But if you noticed, basically a new set of drop-down menus appeared inside my shape layer, basically this effects. 
So that also appeared on the original one. So when we look at the original one, we have something called effect. And that is actually, that window, actually, that drop-down menu contains the, the, the connections from the shape points to the null objects, which means that expanding this so that we can see all the names, you'll notice that the effects on the original one, let me bring this up a little bit, are pointing to something called shape layer one, path one, blah, blah. And then on the second one, we see shape layer two, path one, blah, blah. What that means is each one of these, and it's the connection, controls the connection between a specific point within my shape and one of the null objects. But if you uncollapse these, you will notice that you have a drop down menu for what layer this is pointing to, that point. Where is it connected to? So if I were to say, for example, right now, and drop, on this drop down and look at all the options, basically it's looking at all the layers that are available within my composition, including the null objects. So I can change the connection of that point in the new shape layer to a previous existing null object. So if I go ahead and select this point, for example, now that point on my new shape layer will be connected to my to an all from the previous shape layer. So let's do that for the rest of them. So let's go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to select this one. And instead of having one, two, three, let's select the number three. And then on this one, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to connect to the five. So basically, I have attached my triangle to three points inside the previous, no, in, inside the previous setup, inside the previous rig. Let's call it that. And I can now delete these points here. I don't need this. I mean, these null objects. So I no longer need these null objects. So when I do that, I have cleaned up my interface. I see only the two shapes. And I see the connection that I've connected the second shape layer that I created to the nulls within the previous shape layer, reg. And so if I go to these, for example, and change position by, let's say, wiggle. I'm going to apply wiggle. Um, script to this, and I'm going to wiggle twice but with a value of about 30, let's say. And I want to go ahead and copy that expression and paste it on the rest of the layers. Control V, Command V on the Mac. You will notice that basically my shapes are obeying the original null objects, which is great because it gives you very fluid and controllable if you need to control it through keyframes uh, the formation of the shapes so that is that works really well because you know like I said you have a lot of flexibility and you can keep on reusing null objects or you can keep keep on creating null objects as necessary by simply doing the paths uh, the points follow nulls now the nulls follow points is the reverse of what you just saw so I'm not going to go through that what I want to do I want to I want to do is I want to jump onto the trace paths so let me go ahead and create a new composition. And this one is the one that I've seen people actually going out to look for scripts to, on how to do this. So let me go ahead and create a new path on a new shape layer. And I am going to add a path to this, okay? And the path, and you don't have to do it this way. You can just do it whichever way you create paths yourself. A path is a path, like I've always said. So let me just go ahead and create a path here. I'm simply gonna create something like this. And I want to remove the fill color for this. And I want to add stroke. So actually, I don't need the original shape. I just need the path. So if I wanted to do it this way, I could do it from there. Or if you just prefer to, like I did a few minutes ago, <laughs> a couple of seconds ago, basically you just draw your path and just give it a bit of stroke so we can see it. You don't have to have a stroke, by the way, for this to work, but I just want to show you where the path is. So let's go ahead and select that and make sure that I am going all the way down to the path. Okay, and so I select the path, and in this case, I want to go ahead and say trace path. So when I do that, you'll notice that a null object has been created, and it has been attached or connected to my path. And if I scrub my timeline, you will notice that that null object moves along the path. And at some point, it repeats itself. So let me uncollapse the null object really quick. And you'll notice that it has an effects set up 
and it has something called trace path and it has some kind of thing called progress and you'll notice that that progress has a script underneath it so all of this has been done for you same thing by the way applies to these shape objects so if you look at the shape objects you will notice not the shape objects if you look at the shape layer and look at underneath it you'll have each point has these long lines of scripting so you don't have to if you want to experiment with them go ahead you can go ahead and take a look in detail but if you're not strong with uh scripts then don't worry about it just understanding what it is doing at the top level is what works for the, in this case so you'll notice that in this case the null object has this thing called progress underneath trace path and progress has a script like i said underneath it which allows it to loop at some point as you can see there is a loop out here that allows you to cycle so you could control that loop out if you want to or you can go ahead and simply remove the progress keyframes that it gives you by default or extend their time so if you if this is moving too fast for you you can extend the time between frame between keyframes these are keyframes after all so you can apply easy into them and do all those things uh if you want to create your own you can simply just turn them off and then create your own you know keyframes whatever you want to create them by changing the value of the progress bar so i mean you have complete flexibility now the good thing about this is that say for example um you want to eventually let, let's say you create a new uh, a new shape object over here and then you go ahead and let's say give it a fill and let's make it a circle sorry i should have made it a, a, an ellipse and then give it the fill so let me switch that around and if i were to go ahead and say i want to make the position of this object the child of the of the null object i can just simply say okay that that's going to work i'll just simply go ahead and drag that and you'll notice that my shape follows now the path the beautiful thing about this where this is strong is that the path remains independent from everything else what does that mean well let me go ahead and select the path itself and if I go ahead and select the points in the path, the points inside the actual path, you will notice that my object is attached to the path. So the null object, doesn't matter what the formation I do to this path, will obey the fact that the path is the parent to that null object. Therefore, my, my it doesn't matter the shape of the actual path my null object will still be together glued to that particular percentage value of progress that is inside this null object whatever that happens to be at the time that's where the uh, based on the length of the actual path that's where that null object will always be so this is extremely flexible for um, organic animation and to actually keep control of things that you um, that how you want to animate them through time based on the position or the shape of a path.